Welcome back to the ninth of the details video about the MMC 5983MA 3-axis magnetic sensor. In the previous video, we successfully implemented an offset vector plus scale matrix calibration for that thing and we maxed out on the functionality basically and I promised you I come back as soon as I cleaned up the library uh, card here, link in the description. However, I totally forgot about all these I squared C errors we are getting. So we will take care of those in this video. Enjoy. I have to give you a fair warning. This video might be a wee bit unstructured because we are doing some debugging on a very low level, the I squared C level. Anyway, uh, using the same code like in the last video, I only changed the loop. In the loop, we still have the delay of 100 milliseconds. So we do something every 100 milliseconds and then I still take a temperature measurement. And then that's the timing I worked out by experimenting. We have a delay of 930 microseconds. That's the time the chip needs to complete a temperature measurement. Okay, that's also not documented in the, well, <clears throat> data sheet, but now you know it, 930 milliseconds, uh, microseconds. Then I do a read status and uh, if it something went wrong, I print out the error and then I have, that's also a timing, I worked out a delay of 40 microseconds. Here at that point, because the serial print uh, error here takes about 500 microseconds, we don't really need that delay. But keep in mind, if you repeat read status statements to the chip, you need to pause 40 microseconds between them. Otherwise, the chip won't be sending a proper acknowledge signal back to our Arduino and the Arduino wire library will block indefinitely and you have to reset the chip. Not good. Then I'm printing out here the temperature measurement done bit from the status register we just read. And then we do a read temperature output. And yeah, I haven't optimized the timing here because I haven't had any errors there yet, as we will see in a second. Then uh, same for the take magnetic field measurement, uh, delay 8000 microseconds that actually documented in the data sheet. Read status, yeah, exactly the same like above. So we will see that this is throwing some errors here. Then I print out my magnetic measurement done bit from that second read status here. Then I read my access output and also a non-optimized delay here. And then we saw that in the previous video, I calculate my azimuth and I print that out. So we see the two bits if the temperature measurement is done and the magnetic measurement is done and then the angle at which we are currently pointing. Let's have a look at the serial monitor then. And as you can see the chip, yeah, here a little bit of <laughs> the screen is happily measuring away and both bits for temperature measurement done and magnetic field measurement done. Oh, 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 lots of errors. Let's have a look what we have here. Uh, so we have an error in read status one, that's after the temperature measurement. And we have here errors, lots and lots of errors after uh, read status two, that was the read status after the magnetic field measurement. And if I activate auto scroll again, uh, you see, it's kind of random. So let's have a closer look into the library where these errors actually happen. 
And please also note, we always have only a single error. Yeah, the second read status always seems to work. That's good. So read status just calls read register for the status register and we are reading exactly one register. We've implemented that read registers in the first the details video card link here in the description and it's basically a copy from the read registers of the QMC chip uh, card here, link in the description. Anyway, we do a begin transmission. That means we queue the device address into the output buffer of the via library. Then we queue the register we want to read first also into the output buffer. And then we do a via end transmission, which can fail which basically sends these two bytes to our chip. And if something goes wrong here, yeah, last error and return false. So let's insert a serial print here to see if we fail at that point. And here it is, a simple serial print LN that the error occurred in end transmission. Please note, as you saw on the serial monitor, we always get an I squared C request partial error. That's not something we expect from the end transmission, but hmm, you never know. Next, we have the wire request from, again, with our chip's address and the register count in our case one. And if that fails, that is doesn't return the register count we expect, then last error is I squared, I squared C request partial. And then we check if the number of bytes one is actually available in the via buffer. If that's not the case, yeah, again, error. And we do some serial prints there too. And here they are. Finally, we should have a uh, read bytes from the input buffer of the via library. And again, if uh, we don't get back the number of bytes one we requested, then I do an error I squared C requested partial. And also at that point, I will insert a appropriate serial print for read bytes. Let's have a look at the serial monitor again. So we are getting more information here now. Unfortunately, we get a lot of error. So yeah, uh, I see two request partial uh, right catched in the request from. That's nice. But there was something else, the same here, I wanted to show you, which I found was quite interesting. Here we have a read temperature output also in a request from. So this is failing now to read temperature output. That's interesting. Uh, read status, uh, request from, request from, request from. Request from, request from, request from, request from, request from, request from, request from. So we know that request from is failing and doesn't return the number of bytes we are actually requesting from the chip. The question now is why? As we have seen uh, with other I squared C chips, they are sometimes a little bit meh when it comes to the end transmission bus release beforehand. And usually the master, that is our Arduino, will keep the bus occupied between uh, the end transmission and the request from. But we can change that and release a bus here and see if that changes anything. Look at that, the I squared C errors are gone. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> unfortunately the documentation, uh, I mean low level documentation on the I squared C protocol that chip is employed or has implemented is, uh, well, non-existing in the data sheet, but uh, 
yeah, I will let that run for a while and then we can <clears throat> scroll through it and see if we see still see any error. And if not, this has been a very short video and it was nice uh, seeing you again. Hmm. Sorry. Now that ran for quite some time now. You see the <laughs> scroll bar is very, very small. I don't see an error, but uh, let's just stop it here and copy that into a text editor and do a search for error. Uh, search for error and yeah, no errors. Hmm, great. So I removed all the serial print statements here in my read registers. Sorry for the scrolling. And I put a note in here that the MMC5983 MA requires the bus to be released before the request from. And yeah, we release the bus. So stop is true here again. And that's it. The question is, after we changed the bus release to yeah, actually release the bus in our I2C part of the library, do we still need these 40 millisecond gap delay between read calls to the chip? Or if that is that problem also gone now? Uh, anyway, in setup, I'm just printing out now here that setup is finished and I doubled up here in my code the first read status after we take the temperature measurement. So I do now immediately one after the other two read statuses without the delay of 40 microseconds in between. Let's see if we can, if the library is still blocking because there is not enough time for the chip to send back the acknowledge signal. Yeah. And look at that, that problem is gone too. I think our library, uh, while not pretty, I have still to do some work, is, uh, yeah, here's a setup finished and then we start doing our measurements and everything is, sorry, is really going, where's my chip, uh, smoothly. Um, yeah, library is fine, works perfectly. Uh, but is still but ugly, so I will have to change that in the future. So there will be a tenth video, but that will be probably the last. Since this was really very short, let's tackle another problem. Uh, not a problem of mine, but of a viewer who wants to compile that whole thing for an 80 mega 3 to 8 P. That would be the classic Arduino Nano. In my case, I have here a V3. And yeah, indeed, you can see that uh, throwing an error here in that line that the call of the request from is ambiguous. Uh, let's see if I can fix that. And indeed, if we just cast here our register count, which is given to the function as a size t to a u int 8t, everything compiles fine. Now, we don't need <laughs> in the first place a size t here as a register count because that's 16 bits. So uh, we can make a unified version that works both for the new Nano Every, so uh, all the newer 80 mega boards and the old 80 mega 328p boards by changing this here to U and 8. And yeah, uh, with U and 8t instead of size t here and without the cast here in the function call of request from, it just compiles fine. Please note that I also 
changed that of course here in the function prototype in my class definition for read registers. And while we're at it, let's change it for write registers too. Yeah, so it's nice and symmetrical. And yes, that also compiles just fine. The uh, question is, does everything still <laughs> compile for a more modern CPU? Yep, everything still compiles fine for my Arduino Nano Every. No register emulation selected here. Uh, does it still work? Let's find out on the serial monitor. Yeah, definitely looks like it. And I, I haven't tested it for the, uh, uh, really, if it runs for the, uh, can you see that? Probably not, uh, for the old Nano V3, because I would have to <clears throat> change the boards. I don't want to do that, but it compiles now also for the old Nano V3. That's it for today. A really short video this time and quite right. Just uh, debugging some compilation errors for other types of ups, Arduino Nanos and uh, fixing an I2C library error. My error, <clears throat> well, or the error of uh, yeah missing documentation in the data sheet. Uh, you decide. Anyway, um, next time, uh, I don't know what we will do but there will be at least one more the 10th and then we are pretty much done with that chip video about the MMC 5983MA in which I will just show you a nicely cleaned up library. And I think I mentioned that before. I guess I will completely drop uh, the uh, support for 16-bit mode for that thing because I don't need it and I guess most other people won't need it either. Till then, bye.